here we are, celebrating the birth of a nation, independence for white men, at a site described by one Native American activist as, quote, a symbol of white supremacy. Trump choosing Mount Rushmore for a 4th of July campaign stop is just like when he chose Tulsa, the site of the 1921 massacre against black Americans for his Juneteenth weekend rally. It's that cruel, tired, and familiar jab to black, brown, and indigenous people that makes the shrinking MAGA voter feel as big as a 60-foot face of a colonizing slave owner. Hello, welcome back, everyone. I know we're a few days out from Independence Day, but I just wanted to make sure that we expose all the media personalities and entertainment figures who are now attempting to cancel the 4th of July as a racist holiday, as well as some others who have now come out in support of tearing down America's historical monuments. But wait, I thought Washington and Jefferson weren't comparable to Confederate generals. I thought we were all idiots and rubes for thinking the warped logic being used to take down Confederate monuments would be used to take down all of American history. And maybe Make no mistake, they're going after all of it. Washington, Jefferson, the Pledge of Allegiance, the National Anthem, the American flag, and yes, the 4th of July. I really don't understand it. Why would they want to target such a fun holiday? Everyone loves shooting fireworks. Just look at LA. They banned fireworks and still it looks like they're defending the city from an aerial bombardment. I can't think of a better way to tear this country apart and ensure there will be no unity than canceling the 4th of July. What do these people have against independence anyway? You would think that they would love a holiday celebrating the victory in a revolutionary war against an oppressive empire. Oh, but no, they found the perfect excuse to hate Independence Day, one that they knew would resonate with the left and the Democrat party, white people. Now we're going to get right into discussing this mind bending hatred that the left has for the 4th of July. But first, give me 30 seconds to tell you about this special offer from this episode's sponsor, Biotrust Ageless Multicollagen. Let me show you all one of the things that's helping me to look better and feel great. Collagen may be the closest thing that we ever get to a real fountain of youth. And many health experts now agree, consuming collagen is as crucial as it gets to renewing and revitalizing how you look and feel. After all, collagen is the most abundant protein in your body and is essentially the glue that holds you together. So visit my page at www.healthwithdronetech.com and secure Secure your supply of the best collagen on the market. Black people have been dehumanized, brutalized, criminalized, terrorized by America for centuries and are expected to join your commemoration of independence while you enslaved our ancestors. We reject your celebration of white supremacy and look forward to liberation for all. Bruh. Wait, I enslaved your ancestors? My family didn't come here until the late 1800s from Germany. And in fact, nobody alive in America today has enslaved anyone's ancestors. Hey Kaepernick, you're half white. Maybe your family enslaved your ancestors. The guy is worth $20 million with a salary of 12 million a year. How does this guy convince himself that he's an oppressed victim of American white supremacy? And let's not forget that this is a guy who idolizes is Fidel Castro, a brutal communist dictator who terrorized and murdered the Cuban people. But the literacy rate! Over at MSNBC, the hate-filled black supremacist Joy Reid had an equally disgusting fill-in guest host named Tiffany Cross, who, I kid you not, compared Mount Rushmore to the site of what has been called the single worst incident of racial violence in American history. And so here we are, celebrating the birth of a nation, independence for white men, at a site described by one Native American activist as, quote, a symbol of white supremacy. Trump choosing Mount Rushmore for a 4th of July campaign stop is just like when he chose Tulsa, the site of the 1921 massacre against black Americans for his Juneteenth weekend rally. It's that cruel, tired, and familiar jab to black, brown, and indigenous people that makes the shrinking MAGA voter feel as big as a 60-foot face of a colonizing slave owner. Is it just me, or does this rhetoric sound more and more like subversive communist propaganda? It's like the CCP wrote her talking points. I'm completely baffled as to how this privileged, well-paid black woman is so angry considering what she's been able to achieve in this country. She dismisses the 4th of July as independence for white people, but it eventually led to independence for everyone. What other country would she rather be living in right now? 
I completely reject the claim that black and brown people aren't liberated in America. As I pointed out before, Asian Americans are doing better than anyone in this country, including white people, with Indian Americans being at the very top. Indian Americans tend to have high levels of melanin, so what's the deal? What people like Tiffany Cross want is a tyrannical government that will enforce outcomes, not equal opportunity. What she actually wants is the opposite of independence. Donald Trump chose the most grandiose symbol of U.S. imperialism on Earth to usher in a very on-brand star-spangled spectacle. Wait, what? The most grandiose symbol of U.S. imperialism on Earth. Rushmore is a symbol of U.S. imperialism? She may be the resident fellow at Harvard's Institute of Politics, but she's no historian. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence from British imperialism. I mean, my God, George Washington was the commander in chief of the army that defeated British imperialism. It's not enough that we're gonna do this in sacred lands of Lakota people um, and a place that has been marked by, you know, it's, it's been polluted. It's been desecrated by putting these slave-owning, racist, horrible, horrible white men in 60-foot statues on this wall. The, the, his spectacle, yeah, it's kind of what we expect from Donald Trump. It's, it's a clown show, and, you know, hopefully we send this, this clown back to the circus so maybe he can get eaten by a lion. But, you know... It, Classy. National media personalities wishing death on a U.S. president. Always the sign of a coherent, logical thought process. And who the hell is this guy anyway? He looks like Randy Watson from Sexual Chocolate. You can't take away my dignity. This guy on Reed's show and many in the media at this point have been justifying their attacks on Mount Rushmore by saying that to Native Americans it is sacred land and that somehow justifies all the venom that they're spewing. As I pointed out in yesterday's video, that land has been fought over by Native tribes for centuries. Before we showed up, the Lakota had brutally kicked off the Cheyenne from that land. And before that, the Cheyenne had kicked other Native tribes off the land. It's been going on for centuries. If it's sacred land, then it's sacred for all of us because we all fought over it. Why do we have to tear down these monuments? Why can't we just build new ones? Because this is all just an excuse being used by far left extremist movement to tear down US history and replace it with their communist utopia. And on that note, I wanna end with this CNN interview with one of Biden's possible VP picks. Particularly because the host trots out this, but Washington isn't the same as Confederate traitors line and gets a real dose of reality in return. And instead, so, he had no time for that. He spent all his time talking about dead traitors. So that might be, be true, but George Washington, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody would call him a traitor. And there are mm -hmm. moves by some to remove uh, statues of him. Is that a good idea? I think we should listen to the, everybody. I think we should listen to, to the argument there. But remember that the president at Mount Rushmore was standing on ground that was stolen from Native Americans. So there you have it. Even possible vice presidential picks are backing the destruction of American history. I don't know when it happened, but we've apparently been infiltrated and now they're destroying this country from within. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share and subscribe. It really helps these videos and the channel. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all those links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back. <laughs>